Okay, welcome everyone to today's Kativ Virtual Academy session. Today's topic is going to be on creating forms in Visual Studio with Felix Cortez. Um, we're both so glad that you're here today, and we really hope that you're enjoying the value and the learning experience that we bring to all of these sessions. Um, on the next slide here, you can see all of our upcoming sessions. You can see next week's session is Introduction to Computational Modeling in Medical Device Development. And that one is gonna be hosted by ANSYS, so that'll be next week. Um, you can also see a couple events that we are attending that you can join us at, including the International Manufacturing Trade Show and Autodesk University. And you can get more information about all of these events on our website. Um, if you're a new subscriber to KVA, welcome. And if you're a returning learner, welcome back. We're very grateful that you guys are returning and seeing value and learning a lot in these Kativ Virtual Academy sessions. Um, if you're not already partnered with us, we would love to help your company digitally transform and take advantage of all of our offerings, including our current pricing promotions. We have a few 0% financing options for softwares that you're going to see demonstrated in today's session. And at the bottom here, you can also see our contact information. So don't hesitate to reach out and see how Kativ can help you not only with this specific learning content, but with the full scope of your team's strategy and anything that your business needs help with. At the end of our session today, you will also see a link to provide us with some feedback on the content. You can send suggestions for topics or just general feedback. Please fill that out. It will help us continue to improve this experience for you and provide you with lessons that will really help with your work and your daily workflows. Thank you all again for joining and I will let Felix take it away. <clears throat> Hello everybody, uh, my name is Felix Cortez and today's topic is going to be on how you can create forms with Visual Studio. And what Visual Studio is basically <clears throat> and a third party software where you can uh, develop um, better interactions with your users and you can also create um, like a DLL files on there. And it's pretty helpful uh, if you wanna take your programming to the next level. Um, it's not necessary, it's not, it's not very necessary, but it's, um, it does improve your um, ability to produce customized stuff. So it's a bit of a, um, a intermediate topic uh, today. Uh, so I'm, in, I'm a uh, application engineer here at Kativ. I've been working at the manufacturing industry for five years now. Three of those years, I've been programming with iLogic and Inventor API full time. Uh, I taught myself how to program. I didn't go to school I, uh, for programming. I went for mechanical engineering. And uh, I'm a big belie believer of automation with iLogic um, and all the possibilities it can provide uh, to your company and, and your workflow. <clears throat> I have a bit of a cough today, so uh, bear with me here. Uh, so today's agenda, first we'll go over um, the traditional form creation method uh, with the iLogic add-in. And then we'll go over how you can create a form with Visual Studio and how you can implement uh, a DLL onto um, the iLogic environments and your iLogic rules. <clears throat> so once again, it's a bit of a intermediate topic. Um, so if you're on the beginner side of iLogic, um, this will be a great um, um, uh, introduction of what you can do outside of iLogic and um, in your iLogic journey. <clears throat> so this is um, basically the traditional method of creating any form. I'm sure some of you guys here are probably familiar with this. <clears throat> it's pretty straightforward. You have your form editor here and you have your user parameters on the left side here and they show up when you uh, put them as keyed. And then you have your um, rules here and your properties. <clears throat> and if you wanted to display any of these um, parameters or rules or properties onto your form. All you do is drag and drop onto this form and, uh, and this, is what, this is what your user will see. And <clears throat> over here to the bottom left is your toolbox where you can um, uh, have a little bit more interaction from your user. And over here on the right, you can uh, define the appearance, uh, appearance of those interactions in the form. You can also um, set some behaviors um, to these uh, interactions. So with, with just a form editor on iLogic, uh, you can accomplish a good amount of automation with it. Um, it. It's not, once again, it's not necessary to go the extra step and create a, um, a form with a, a standalone application, but it's, um, it is pretty helpful. 
especially if you want to take your, your programming to the next level once again. So uh, let me go back actually. Um, so this form, what it's basically just um, allowing the user to do is adjust the height, length, width, and the handle type. It's very basic for this platform. Um, and this is the form we created with the iLogic add-in or that I created before this um, KVA. And this is um, another form that I created with the Visual Studio. And it looks a little bit more branded, a um, little bit more nicer. Um, and it's, it also has uh, four inputs, the height, length, width, and the handle type. Then I added some extra buttons here on, on the bottom <clears throat> that were just for fun. And right here, we could see a, uh, you know, it's, it's getting branded a little bit more nicer than the traditional method uh, with the iLogic add-in. Uh, so that's what I want to go over uh, today. So what we'll be working with is <clears throat> this inventor model right here. And it's just a uh, simple platform. Um, but the idea of it is that we want to be able to adjust uh, the height of this platform and you know the overall dimensions of it. <clears throat> uh, so let me go ahead and uh, actually run this rule um, before I, I break down how it was made. And it's the same <clears throat> rule that we just saw right now. And I could adjust uh, the height. Uh, let's say I wanted to <clears throat> increase the length to, I don't know, 112 inches and the width to let's say 80. And if I want to switch it to a round, uh, round two panel, um, I, I put this button, this green check mark to be the one to um, run the rule. Uh, so there it goes. It um, it made the platform, and you know once again you could do this with a traditional iLogic form. So if we look at the Visual Studio side of this, this is where I designed um, the form. So this will be like the form editor, and over here on your left, <clears throat> this is where um, your toolbox is, and you have a wider ray, uh, range of uh, options you can do. Uh, if you compare that to um, the events or add-in, uh, so I go, if I go here to edit form, this is your options that you can do, uh, which is very limited. Um, and, but if we go back to Visual Studio, it's um, it's wider range of possibilities. And if you don't have Visual Studio set up on your workstation, uh, there's a free version, a community version. And there's um there's some YouTube videos out there that um, can guide you on how to install it. Just like look up Inventor setting up Visual Studio or something like that, and it will walk you um, through the steps to install the the software itself. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's where you can edit the form, and uh, there's also the programming side of it where you can um, handle different e events. Uh, so if you press this button. Um, uh, what would you want your user to do, right? So if I just double click this, it takes me in, um, well, this one already exists. Uh, let me see for one, um, let's see. Let me go ahead and, and just suppress this and um, so I can demonstrate something. If I go ahead and double click this, this new, um, this thing pops up, it automatically pops up and basically what it's doing, it's handling uh, when this button is selected and it's clicked on, um, it's, if we can, write our program here or whatever we need to do. And we could do that with different um, events that can occur. Um, for example, if I just hover over this button, that could trigger an event. If I leave this button, that could trigger another event. And same thing with these text boxes, these, these labels, um, this list. Um, there's, um, let me demonstrate actually. So if I uh, just, uh, right here on the button that's called select folder, Here's the different events that we can um, trigger uh, with uh, Visual Studio. And that adds a little bit more functionality to your, um, your, your programming or your forms, I mean. So let's go ahead and actually um, create a very basic form for our platform. Um, so um, once you launch Visual Studio, <clears throat> this will be what uh, you will see. And all you have to do is go down to create new project. I already have I already have the templates pinned, and these templates come with the Visual Studio uh, application. Um, I already have these templates pinned, but if you want to filter, you could filter all by the language you're using, which in my case is Visual Basic, and the platform will be Windows for me. And you can see the different options. Now, there's um, you can create a form 
Um, but the method we're going to do is actually going to be the class library. And let's see if it's in this list here. Sometimes I can't find it, but if, uh, you could also search it up. Like if you type class library, um, the different class uh, libraries will show up here. Um, yeah, it'll be down here. Uh, uh, we will need to use a net framework, which would be this one right here. <clears throat> so once you select your your um, your template, and these have different functions. So this produces a DLL file. These produce a .exe file. And um, what we want to do is just create a DLL file. So I'll double click this, and right here we can assign this a project name. I I could call this uh, platform, or I just call it KVA platform. <clears throat> And right here, I can save it in the location that I want. And I'll press uh, create right here. So this is what we start off with. And um, there's, we start off with the class, um, but we don't really need this. Um, so I'm just actually going, going to delete this. What we want to do is create a form. So I'm going to right click on, um, on KVA platform and I'm going to press add. <clears throat> I'm going to press add new item. And right here, I'm going to select form, Windows Forms. Oh, I did not give it a name, but uh, let me restart this. Let me right click this and um, new item. Let me actually give this a name. I will call this um, oh, AVA platform for the form. And now, <clears throat> once I add that, we can see this um, uh, form editor appears. And so it's a lot to take in when you first uh, in the, are in this environment. Um, but over here on the left, uh, I mean, uh, on the right side, we have the properties of this form. So <clears throat> we can adjust the appearance. And it's similar to on our iLogic um, editor, um, where we had a, the, where we can all, um, mess around with the properties of it. <clears throat> so right here, we have more options available once again. If we wanted to give this a background image, like how the other form was, we would just select right here, background image and uh, go to local resource and we can import a file. So uh, let's say I wanted to use this uh, complete background. I'll select this and I'll press okay. Uh, but obviously it doesn't look right. Um, uh, it's not, um, it's not, I, I guess, pixelated correctly. Uh, but if I go down here where it says background image layouts and if I press stretch, then I can um, see the whole image and I can, uh, whenever I stretch this um, Windows form, uh, it resizes it correctly. <clears throat> I'm actually going to set the default font for this. Uh, let's set it to 12, uh, stretch it out. And there's some other things you can do <clears throat> for the text. You can uh, change the name of this um, uh, form here. Uh, we just call this operator that form. And some other uh, <clears throat> behavior stuff you can uh, change. Uh, let's see what else we can do for now. Now, um, right here, we can set uh, the size of the form if we wanted to limit it to a certain size. <clears throat> right here, we can change the icon, on, uh, which appears right here in the top left. <clears throat> and if I click the three dots right here, uh, this has to be an ICO file, uh, which there's converters online if you wanted to make an ICO file. And <clears throat> once I press uh, select it, we can see the, the Kativ logo on the, up in the top left. Um, and yeah, there's other things you can uh, modify here. So right now it's just a very plain form. It's just a, uh, well, there's nothing to this form, uh, but if we wanted to go ahead and add labels, so let's say we wanted to, um, uh, let our user know where to input the height. Uh, I would create a label here. And then um, right here on, under the text, I can um, <clears throat> type what I want the user to see. So right here, I want the user to be able to see height. And we can see that right here. And once again, we could change the different appearance stuff on this um, label here. And if we, want, if we wanted to. So when you're creating a form, it's nice because uh, you could actually drag and uh, move it wherever you want, as opposed to when you're creating it on Inventor, you're kind of limited to where you can put that. Um, uh, so that's that's not <clears throat> nice ability to have. So this is a label, but we want uh, a user to be able to actually type something somewhere. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to find a text box. And so let's say this is a text box for the height. And you know, I can move it around uh, once again. <clears throat> and let's say I wanted uh, the user to also input the, the length. So I'm going to copy and paste this uh, for the different options. <clears throat> Let me rename this to length here. And then this one will be width. Oh, missing the columns here. And let's say you wanted a, a drop down uh, box for our users to select a handrail, uh, which will be a combo box <clears throat> up here. And I'll put this right here and I'll get, grab another label and put it right there. Oh, that looks good. And I'll rename this to handrail type. And for this list, I want the user to only have the option for um, handrail, uh, I mean, for round and square. So if I go to items on the collection, I can type what the user would see here. I would type um, uh, round tube and then <clears throat> square tube. And that'll be the only options that the user has available. I'm actually going to change uh, um, one of their parents here to drop down this. <clears throat> so now we have our um, locations where our user can input um, certain information. Now let's go ahead and start writing some code that goes along with this form. So let me, uh, I'll just double click the first one. Now, if we look at this, um, we see um, this rule, I mean, this rule, this subroutine will handle whenever this text box one, um, the, whenever the text changes. Now, this is not the best way to do it because, okay, what exactly is text box one? If we go to our form editor once again, we can change um, the names of those texts so, uh, so that we can better understand it. Oh, let me delete this. So we can better understand this um, subroutine. So I'm actually going to delete this for now. And I'm going to rename this text box down here below. Uh, we're under name. Now this name is not for the user to see. This name is for the programmer to see. And I'm going to start uh, typing text and I am going to type height. Now, and I'll do the same thing for the length, text length, and the width, text width, and then for the handle type, which will be um, CBO and real type. <clears throat> now there's a um, naming convention um, that kind of signifies on how you should name the front of it. So that's when, uh, let me double click this once again. When you're looking at the program, you can see TXE. Okay, it must be a text box. And if we <clears throat> double click this handrail, CBO, okay, it must be a, a combo box. Uh, so there is a naming convention. Um, this is what I found online. Um, there's um, some naming convention here. So if you're like uh, working with the form, you would start off with um, FRM. And if you're working with a label, <clears throat> a text box, uh, and other things, combo box. And um, it's nice to have a um, convention so that uh, everybody is on board on what exactly is um, being worked with, with when you're actually programming. Because if not, it's just a bunch of random words and letters. All right, so we want to add some functionality to this form. So um, if, uh, if the user inputted a um, let's say a, a word here, that would be invalid because these should be numeric. So we should probably write a subroutine that will um, make sure that the what the user inputs here is always going to be numeric. So uh, let me go back to this height and this event will be perfect for that. Whenever the, this, um, whenever the text changes, um, we will check to see if, um, if that, input is numeric or not. So we can go ahead and start typing something like uh, if text height, um, this we're calling out for the, the text box, and I'm going to type dot text. Uh, actually, first, before I start this, let me type is numeric. So we're checking to see um, if this object here is numeric, and we're going to type 
uh, text height once again uh, text. <clears throat> if this is false, then um, well, we need to um, let the user know, hey, this is not valid, and this is not a valid input. Um, so <clears throat> I am actually going to pull up a routine that I wrote on this <clears throat> program. Let me just copy this right here. And I'll paste it here. So, oh, let me, <clears throat> let me import a reference, import system from those forms. So what this uh, subroutine is basically going to do is going to grab a text box and check to see if, a, uh, if that text is numeric or not. And if it's not numeric, it's going to remove those letters or words from, <clears throat> from the input. So if this is false, if it's not false, I want to call that subroutine call remove car, uh, characters, uh, string characters from text box. Now I'm going to input text height right here. <clears throat> Then I want to exit the sub, oh, exit the sub. And I would do this for each of the text boxes. Um, but right now we haven't really set any values equal to anything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to define some um, properties to this uh, form. And I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to create a public property, uh, let's say height as a double, and then <clears throat> public property length as a double, public property uh, width as a double. So uh, you know what, these are, uh, let, me, let me write operator in front actually. Yeah, this will be better. Or actually platform would be a better word. Sorry about that. All right, platform height, platform length, um, platform width. All right, so whenever this text is changed, uh, for the height, I want to set the platform height is equal to text um, height text. And once again, once it gets to this point, we know it's numeric because if it's not numeric, it's going to exit out of that sub. Um, and let me actually set the platform height equal to zero initially. All right, so you would have to do the same for the height, uh, I mean, for the length and the width. So let me double click this uh, length here and then double click this width so that it creates our events um, whenever the texts are changed in those text box. Let me uh, actually copy this and move it up here in the front to group them nicely together. <clears throat> and actually, let me write a message box here. Message box, um, please input a numeric value and an exclamation mark to yell at them. Uh, so let me copy this and uh, put it for the length and I would just uh, update this right here. Uh, length and uh, text length as well. Oh, and same here. <clears throat> and same here as well. And <clears throat> right here, one more time. All right, one more time for the width. Hopefully I'm not too, I'm not going too fast. All right, so platform links, platform width, and let me move um, this here. And all right, there we go. So we have um, our um, properties um, defined by whatever the user inputs. Now we should probably make Another property called um, property and rel type, and that'll be a string. So whenever the user selects a different option for the combo box, we are going to set that hand rel type is equal to CBO and rel type text. <clears throat> All right, so that's. Um, the four main parameters that we want to mess around with. And we could add buttons if we wanted to um, right here or wherever we wanted to. And um, we could set those behaviors as well. Like if I um, double click this and create an event, this will handle whatever we want it to handle. Um, we probably might not, you know, to get too much time to mess around with buttons, but um, yeah, the same thing, you could mess around with appearance. You could 
Um, you could put an image. So on the previous form, I had a um, checkbox. So, uh, you know, you can put an image behind this um, button and I should probably stretch that out and then um, readjust the size to make it look like a green checkbox. And I will name, uh, or actually I'll, I'll remove the text. So it's just a check, uh, check mark here. Um, and let's just create an, an event whenever, um, well, let's actually do good programming practice and rename this button to <clears throat> button check mark. Now, whenever we press this, um, let's say we wanted to display a message saying um, the check, the green check mark has been put. So that's all that event will handle. <clears throat> and uh, we could um, add more things and um, yeah, there's a lot of other stuff that we can do. Uh, for example, if we wanted to add a, a slider to our um, interface, we can do that as well. Um, all right. And also, yeah, like a progress bar and stuff like that. All right, so now that we have our form made, um, we can go ahead and build this solution. And we can do that. Uh, let me move this to the side. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, just go up here and uh, build solution. So when we build it, uh, we see this outputs down here below. And this lets us know <clears throat> where this DLL was stored at and saved to. And then right here, it will let us know if we were successful. And if we had errors in this um, program, it would let us know here on the error list. Um, so now this was just to create a form. It wasn't actually to uh, write the iLogic or the Inventor API to actually modify the platform. Um, but let's go ahead and launch this form from Inventor. Uh, so let me go back to Inventor. <clears throat> I'm going to create a new, new rule. And I'll leave it as uh, rule one, it's fine. So when we're here, um, uh, we, I guess we could press this header button, um, but if we don't press it, we can also just type add ref reference. And this is to um, for inventor to locate this DLL file that we just created. Um, so let me copy this whole location <clears throat> and type it right here. So I added the reference when I, when I want to import this ref, uh, DLL file, KVA platform. All right, so now we have that um, DLL um, on here. So let's go ahead and actually launch the form. So I'm going to define, um, uh, I'll just call it form as new, uh, what did we name this? We named this um, KVA platform as KVA platform. And once, uh, once I start typing, since we loaded it up, um, we can see that it's uh, popping up here. <laughs> Let's see what happened. Oh, you know what? That's probably not a good name to name it. Let's call this uh, KVA form. Um, oh. Let's see, type. Hmm. Let me put a one here and give it a different name. And let me actually re rebuild this. Um, let's see what would be the best way to do this. Yeah, I think it's um, pretty initial because we named the form the same name as the DLL file. All right, so what would be the best way? What's I am going to rename that DLL file, see if that changes something. All right. Let's see. <clears throat> um, let's try doing this. Uh, I'm just going to rename this and put a one at the end. And let's go back to our um, room. Uh, let me bring that up. I'll just type one right here. Let's see if this works now. Uh, then give a form as new T platform. Type is expected. Yeah, I think it's the way I named this um, class here. Let me go ahead and actually, um, we'll create a new form here real fast. And we'll just copy and paste. Uh, I'll need, need this as form two. And I will copy the contents here and place it on here. 
I see the names remain the same. Okay, yeah, they do rename the same. And I'll double click this area to create this. And um, I'll, I'll leave this um, loading here. And I will just copy all of this stuff here and place it onto here. And let me go ahead and rebuild this. Xbox, oh, I have to import system windows forms. All right. And now let me go back here and rename this one and delete this one. Oh. Uh, let's put a two in the end. All right. And I'll call this uh, dim KV form as <clears throat> new uh, form two, I believe it was called. Form two is not defined. What is going on here? See if um, restarting inventor will do it. Yeah, let me try to restart inventor and see if that's the issue. All right. All right, let's open up this platform again. And we will add a rule. And once again, uh, type add reference. And let's go back to this, uh, grab this here. Uh, imports TV platform. Oh, you know what? Yeah, it's not, let me put a tool here. All right, there we go. Then KVA has new flat KVA platform. Hmm. Let me see if imports system can go forms. All right, let me go back to this rule. Yeah, so not too sure why it's giving me errors right now. This one isn't giving me errors. Um, but uh, basically what um, the method is to load this form uh, would have been to just uh, define a new variable as um, that class that we created. So this class, um, that we created up here, that would be what we're calling out. Uh, so in this scenario, we made a, our, um, and the one I uh, pre-made before this uh, meeting, we have a class called platform form. And so let's go back to this functioning rule that's actually linked correctly. Um, so I defined a variable as a new platform here. And once again, I loaded that uh, reference, and that's the yellow file. So if I go back um, and search that one up, so let's go to, this one is right here. It's linking to this DLL file right here. And after that, I import that DLL. Uh, so I define a new variable called a, um, a, as a platform form. And then I display that dialog right here um, by typing. Uh, so if I type form, all of these different, um, uh, methods show up. And if I wanted to display that form, I'll just type show dialog and it will show up that form. And <clears throat> so how we defined um, properties on this uh, class right here, we can actually access those um, properties from this variable that we created um, right here, we called it form. Um, we can access those properties once the user inputs those values um, onto that form. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's giving uh, me this error right now. Kind of looks like I can't debug it right now. KVA uh, platform. Let me see one more time. Ah, um, I wonder if it was because we deleted. Um, 
wonder if it's because we deleted, uh, let's see, not this one. Uh, let's see, public class, last attempt, last one. All right, let's see if we rebuild this. And <clears throat> go back to AV platform, uh, debug. And let's call this three right here. All right, so, ah, it doesn't work either. All right, so unfortunately, uh, um, yeah, there's some sort of uh, issue going on here with my, my uh, setup. And then uh, the issue might have originated how um, I named the, <clears throat> the DLL file and how I named the class at the same time. That might have caused an issue. So I, I yeah, I called it KVA platform, but at the same time, this DLL is called uh, KVA platform. That might have been the issue. Um, so we'll be moving on to uh, questions uh, now. Um, yeah, or just a review of what we went over. Uh, just an alternative method on how you can uh, create forms and an introduction to Visual Studio and how you can load those DLLs onto the iLogic interface. Uh, so uh, I'll be going over a uh, few questions that you guys have. Hopefully the questions isn't why that, that issue occurred. Um, there are a few questions in the Q and A box. Um, the first one says, "Is asking if we can download uh, Visual Studio for free, the free version?" Yeah, uh, there's a community version, <clears throat> and you can, um, if you just look up on YouTube, you could find a uh, step by step instruction on how you can download that. It's just like uh, setting up Visual Studio 2022, and put an inventor in the keyword, so it's for inventor. Uh, that was for David Flores. And uh, what Avengers is Visual Studio has for Visual Basic user? Uh, there's a, a, a lot of advantages, um, especially if you're going to be programming on using the Inventor, um, um, the Inventor API. Just the, the interface itself, it's, it's cleaner. It, um, it's easier to debug stuff on here. And you can load up the <clears throat> Inventor DLL onto this um, on um, this Visual Studio, and you can actually program. You can make an EXE file that will um, and do automations for you. <clears throat> can Inventor output a reference parameter value that was driven output a reference? Yes. Um, you can do that for the form. So actually, let me demonstrate on the rule that was actually working. And <clears throat> let me, all right, so let's, all right, let me just put exit sub right here. And right here, I'm going to type form text with text, um, text is equal to hello. I'm going to suppress this. <clears throat> so if I run this, ah, tell me to, Please enter a numeric value. Um, let me change that actually to, let me change this to a number. Let me type 99999. If I run this, <clears throat> the form keeps popping over here. Um, yeah, so automatically it's displaying those numbers onto that um, uh, text box that we just defined. So if we look back at the code, we basically just said um, set that text to 9999. <clears throat> but uh, you can have more functionality. So um, on the form itself, like you, you could have all your code written on here and not on the rule itself. Like um, this form uh, or this rule has all the, the component replace and the parameter updates, but you can write the whole program on this, um, on this environment here. So whenever like the length changes, uh, so whenever this um, event gets triggered, you can update the length of all the components of your platform. So yeah, so and you could, um, and in doing it that method, you can yeah send back values back to the form uh, as needed. 
Um, there's a community version, uh, Dennis, um, for Visual Studio, and um, there's a professional version um, uh, available. There's two different uh, versions available. All right, uh, Jared, are there limitations on what versions um, of Visual Studio you can use to make yellows? The, <clears throat> also, yeah, the main important thing is what uh, framework you're using. Um, so you could use Visual Studio 2019 and make a DLL and it would work on uh, Inventor 2022. <clears throat> You just have to make sure that the framework is correct. I had an issue once when I was trying to um, program uh, using the Inventor API uh, on Visual Studio and it kept giving me errors and that was because I was programming on the framework 4.6. Um, but you can avoid that issue <clears throat> if you just um, change the framework. Uh, so let me go ahead and go right here. So I can see the framework right now that's being built is 4.7. Uh, so 4.7 and above is, is good to go. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, you could uh, use Visual Studio 2019. I think you could even use 2017 Visual Studio. Hope that answers your question, Jared. Any other questions? Oh, did I just stop sharing my screen? Um, oh, never mind. No, we can see your screen. Oh, okay. Is there a list of which framework you need to use for each year? Um, yeah, normally that doesn't change. Um, but uh, Visual, uh, Microsoft updates their frameworks pretty often. So there's actually a 4.8 available. Um, uh, yeah, for 2019, and, and you could download that framework. Um, you could download that framework from, uh, if you just press install the frameworks and it's it's Microsoft, so it's a trustworthy website. Um, if you don't have 4.7 on 2019. Um, yeah, if your 2019 Visual Studio doesn't have 4.7, you could yeah, just go ahead and press right here. Let's yeah, launch it up. So if I press this button, it will take me here and <clears throat> it will let me know. Okay, so there's 4.6 and 4.7. And you can go ahead and, and download those uh, different frameworks. Uh, on this website, <clears throat> if you don't have 4.7 um, loaded up here. Any other questions? What can you not do with the free version? Uh, the free version is... Mm, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. Um, I guess the only thing um, you could not do is for profit, I guess. Um, yeah, you'll have to see what that um, limits you to. But for as far as the development side, um, you can make forms and, and DLLs just about the same as the uh, paid version, I believe. <clears throat> Any other questions are, are you using? Um, I'm using the professional version right now, but I have used the community version in the past um, several times and never had an issue with the community version. For a company to use Visual Studio as an ID, do you have to have it? Um, probably yes, uh, I would say. Most likely, yes, you would need to have the professional version. More than likely. Any other questions? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Oh, I guess we're out of questions uh, for today's KVA. Um, any last words you want to say, uh, Christina, before we ended the meeting? No, thank you everyone for joining. Um, if you could fill out the survey at the end of the session to leave your feedback or any future topics that you'd like to see, we would really appreciate it. Thank you, Felix, for leading the session and we will see you guys at next week's session. Yeah, take care guys. Bye. Thanks for joining the KVA today.